It's Duffy's Tavern, brought to you transcribed by the National Broadcasting Company, with Charlie Cantor as Finnegan, Hazel Sherman as Miss Duffy, Fats B. Sean at the piano, and starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meet to eat. Archie the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. What'd you get for Christmas? Drunk, huh? <laughs> well, how do you feel? A pink elephant just walked into the room? <laughs> Duffy, take another look. <laughs> That's what I thought. Just Mrs. Duffy in a nightgown. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's the end of the holiday season, Duffy. Uh, by the way, the new uh, 1952 calendar just arrived. Oh, yeah. <whistles> Some pictures on it. You ought to see January. <laughs> A real hot-looking blonde, you know, wearing one of them skimpy ski suits. What a pair of skis. <laughs> huh? February? Let me see. February's even better. <clears throat> She's peeled off her coat. <laughs> Let's see here. Holy cat. March. Her hat's gone and her skis have disappeared. <laughs> I just can't wait to see what happens in April. Hmm. A Boy Scout rubbing two sticks together. <laughs> Well, enough of calendars, Duffy. I'm busy working on the books, huh? Uh, well, I'm uh, checking last year's fiscals. Oh, well, uh, as I see it, Duffy, uh, considering the instability of the domestic market and the fluctuating devaluation of the franc, plus other unpredictable seasonal factors, we're broke. <laughs> huh? What's the remedy? Well, uh, I suggest that we liquidate our bonded assets by watering the stock. <laughs> you agree? Good. Fats, put some more water in the bar rye. Right. More water? Mr. Archer, right now that bar rye is so defenseless, it's a wonder that ain't been occupied by Russia. <laughs> is that so? Well, if the liquor's so weak, then why did Three Drink McTavish fall down drunk last night? He wasn't drunk. He was just waterlogged. <laughs> Stop arguing water to drinks, will you? Now, you remember the recipe, don't you? Two jiggers of rye and one of water. One what of water? One bucket. <laughs> what else? Huh? What, Duffy? Well, do you want me to use brains or do you want me to be an executive? Huh? Either I either want or I else... Look, don't try to intimidate me, you baboon. Goodbye. Archie, I wish you wouldn't use such language to Papa. Baboon? No, intimidate. <laughs> intimidate? What's so such language about that? You know very well any word over three syllables Papa thinks you're swearing at him. Oh, yeah? Well, in the future, I'll keep it down to two syllables. One for each head. <laughs> The nerve of that monster. Either I either want or I else. When I think of what I've done to improve this place, the brains that I've used up. You heard me, brains. Oh, no? Look, who invented the idea of lowering the stools at the bar so that the customers feel small if they only order one drink? <laughs> And who thought of the idea of sticking numbers on their backs so when they fall face down, their wives can identify them? <laughs> I did, but do you ever give me one iota of gratitude? Huh? Who's swearing at you? <laughs> gratitude only has three syllables. <clears throat> Look, Duffy, what's the use? We despise each other. We can't stand the sight of each other. So why don't I just quit while we're still friends? Huh? Okay, 
Pay me the 15 bucks salary for this week and I'm finished. Huh? Just a second. Miss Duffy wants to talk to you. Hmm. Hello, Papa. Yeah, that's what I say. Good riddance. What, Papa? Oh, just a minute. Papa says, which would you rather have, a check for $15 or $14 in cash? <laughs> a cheap chiseler. I want 15 bucks and not a penny less. Hello, Papa. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> what? Yeah, Papa, that's a good idea. Archie. What? He says, will you take twelve fifty dollars and a reference? <laughs> I'll take $15 and a reference Hello, Papa Oh, you heard what he said Mm-hmm Mm-hmm Uh, Archie Yeah? Papa says he's very fond of you Uh-huh And he'd like to help you get more money on your next job Uh-huh So he says if you'd be willing to settle for $10 He'll say in the reference he was paying you 20 <laughs> Give me that phone. Duffy, ain't you ashamed of yourself? After 11 long years, 11 long years of sweating me nose to the grindstone for you, how can you do a thing like this? You're the kind of a guy that'd try to squeeze blood out of a tulip. Huh? Okay, I'll put it back on. Hello, Papa. What? You've changed your mind? He has it coming to him. All right, Papa, I'll tell him. Papa says, go ahead and sue. <laughs> and that's just what I'm going to do. Fats, remind me to contact me lawyers. Uh, Flyshacker, Bushwhacker, Millstone, and Briggs. Uh, just as soon as I get back from Honolulu. As soon as you get back from Honolulu? Yeah. How are you planning to go to Honolulu? How do you think? On a westbound halibut? <laughs> No, I ain't going on the westbound halibut. I'm going on the SS Luralane on A deck. On A deck? Yeah. Can't afford a stateroom, huh? <laughs> For your information, I'm going over in the bridal suite. The bridal suite? Yes, sir. I can see myself already. Relaxing in a perfume bubble bath, dousing myself with tropical scented powder. Getting into me soft, fluffy bed and me silk pajamas. And bending over to kiss yourself goodnight. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Doubt me, you Thomases, but uh, just don't be surprised when you get a postcard from uh, Hawaii. What's that? Hawaii? Uh, <laughs> that's the uh, Polynesian pronunciation, you know. The E's is always pronounced twice. I see, E.E. -E. <laughs> yes, sir. What a beautiful place, Honolulu. Uh, <clears throat> you've been there, of course. Oh, yes, of course. I flew over it many times when I used to go around with Peter Pan. <laughs> but don't be so funny. It's really beautiful, Fats. They got a beach over there called, uh... Waikiki? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. What a beautiful beach with the soft music and the waving palm trees. It's the greatest spot for lovemaking you ever saw. Romantic, huh? Romantic. It's like one long bench in Central Park. Uh, sort of a Niagara Falls with sand flies. Yes, sir. Uh, romance is in the air, you know. You, you sit out there in the moonlight... With the soft, gentle breezes of the trade winds whispering softly through the palm trees. And you listen to the lovely chant of the native music. Honolulu, what is perfume in the air? The perfume of gardenias and orchids and jasmines. Will you cut it out? I'm talking about Honolulu and them hula dancers. The hula dancers. Them beautiful... I'm talking, if you don't mind, will you cut out the acapella? <laughs> them beautiful shapely maidens, them hula dancers, whose every movement seems to say... Uh, all right. <laughs> Hello, 
Flanagan. Look, hey, do you have to open your big mouth just when I'm surrounded by a bunch of beautiful hula dancers? Oh, sorry, Arch. I'll drop back later when you're alone. <laughs> well, girls, nice to meet you. I... Girls, look, Finnegan, the hula dancers have disappeared. Oh, they disappeared? Yeah. How much of a check did they clip you for? <laughs> Finnegan, stand still a minute. Eh? Okay. Now shake your head. Okay. Feel better? I can't tell till the rattling dies down. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that seems to have done the trick. <laughs> well, good. The bells sound much clearer. Though. Why? Oh, yeah, them round, pear-shaped, golden toes. Yeah. Now, as I was saying, uh, there I am in me suite at the Royal Hawaiian, surrounded by 12 beautiful hula dancers. And the way I'm throwing me money around, they uh, think I'm King Kamula Mula. <clears throat> so, George. Yeah? You sure you ain't hearing any bells? Finnegan, don't be ridiculous. You, you see, Finnegan, you're a little different from the rest of us, and... As I said, you're different from the rest of us. Uh... Finnegan, uh... did you hear anything then? No, I no. Hmm... Maybe you better shake your head. Look, Finnegan, enough of this conversation. Quick, your surfboard, it went that away. Oh, hey, wait for me, fellas. Oh, wicky, wicky, wicky. Oh. Oh. Archie, what's all this nonsense about Honolulu? Where are you going to get the money for a trip like that? Who said anything about money? I get the trip free. For what? For winning a contest. What contest? The slogan contest, of course. You mean you wrote a slogan, and if the slogan wins a prize, you get a trip to Honolulu? That's right. I didn't realize that. I better go pack your ukulele. <laughs> Archie, what do you know about writing slogans? What did Grandma Moses know about oil paint? Nothing, yet it didn't stop her from painting the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Hey, Art, is that the slogan you're counting on to win the trip to Honolulu? Well, no, the Hawaiian slogan's different, you see. The uh, Honolulu contest is one of them kind where they announce the winner on the radio, sort of. To win it, you have to tell why you like Honolulu. Now, listen while I read you me prize-winning slogan. I like Honolulu because when I land on the island of Honolulu... I hope I land a honey that's a Lulu. It's terrible. I think it's beautiful. You see what I mean? Well, at least Clifton understands me genius. Yeah, I like Honolulu because when I love a Lulu, I think it's an island. Arch, that is sheer genius. Regardless of what do you think, so I'm practically on my way. I almost feel that I could close my eyes, go to sleep, and when I wake up, you know where I'll be? Yeah, on a couch in a psychiatrist's office. <laughs> oh, everybody around here is so jealous. Fats, uh, play a little Hawaiian music to put me in the mood, will you?
trying to get something on the radio, Mr. Archie? Uh, 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 no, Fats. I'm just tinkering around with the shortwave band. <laughs> I'm kind of an amateur ham, you know. I know. I resent the tone of your reference. Now, don't bother me. I want to listen to this radio here now. I... Ah, good evening, Fats. Good evening, Miss Duffy. Oh, good evening, hey, Officer Duffy. Clancy. Say, now tell me, where's Archie? He's over there listening to the radio. Say, now that reminds me, I'd better go home and listen to my own radio. You know, tonight's the big night on NBC. They're announcing the winners of that uh, Kitty Slogan contest. The Kitty Slogan contest? That's right, Fats. And do you know that the first prize is a free trip to Honolulu? Oh, no. It just couldn't be. Yes, sir. You know, the contest is only for children under 13 years of age. <laughs> <laughs> and my little nephew has high hopes of winning it. Uh-huh. And I think I know another little kitty who has high hopes of winning it. <laughs> well, is that so? Well, as I always say, may the best child win. Well, good night, everybody. Good night, good Officer, night Officer Clancy. Clancy. Oh, Archie. Uh, uh, yeah, Miss Duffy. What station are you trying to get there? Oh, no special station. Just fiddling around with the super heterodyne here to <laughs> see if the rear stat is picking up any static. <clears throat> Why don't you try to get NBC? Why should I? Is NBC trying to get me? <laughs> I'd uh, just as soon prefer to get some other station temporarily. Uh, leave us see what's on number 1310 here. And so, friends, ends another chapter in your favorite radio serial, The Life of John and Mary, the story of Herman and Gladys. <laughs> <laughs> Does John suspect that Mary suspects that John suspects Mary? <laughs> What will John say when he looks in the laundry chute? <laughs> Tune in tomorrow and find out if two run-of-the-mill people can find happiness running a mill. Boy, what a program. I just, I just can't wait to hear the finish of it. Hey, Fats, quit twisting that dial, will you? And here is a big treat for you moviegoers. Coming soon to your neighborhood theater, another spectacular production by David O. Goliath. The man who brought you Fireball. The man who brought you Cannonball. And now he brings you his greatest triumph, Matzo Ball. Mm. Hello, little kiddies of Radio Land. This is your Uncle Rodney. Uh, Miss Duffy, Miss Duffy, leave go of the radio. That's NBC. And guess what a great big treat your Uncle Rodney has in store for you tonight. That's right. Tonight we're going to announce the winner of our Honolulu Slogan Contest, sponsored by Itsy Bitsies, makers of giant Itsy Bitsies and Itsy Itsy Bitsies. Remember the name, Itsy Bitsies, the cereal that shot from howitzers. <laughs> and here's what you've all been waiting for, kiddies The result of the slogan contest uh, Fats and Miss Duffy, huh? go over there to the other side of the room And uh, turn, turn off that jukebox, huh? The jukebox ain't playing Well, turn it off anyhow <laughs> It's liable to start playing any minute uh... And the winner of the first prize is young Master Archie Age 13 <laughs> Master Archie. What a coincidence. The kid's got the same name as me. <laughs> yes, that's the winner, kiddies. Young Master Archie of 2, 22, and 1 half, 3rd Avenue. What a coincidence. The kid's got the same address, too. <laughs> According to the rules of the contest, our young winner must answer the telephone when I call. So... Certainly hope that little Master Archie is standing by waiting for my call. Does little Junior want Mommy to hold him up to the telephone? <laughs> well, 
crook. There could be two Archies, you know. I wonder whoever that could be. Uh, answer it, uh, will you, Miss Duffy? Uh, hello? Yeah, he's here. Who is it? It ain't Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Hello, Uncle Rodney. <laughs> yeah, this is Mr. Archie. Well, thank you, Uncle Rodney. That's just super. Huh? When are you gonna send me the ticket? Huh? You're gonna bring it down personally. <laughs> but jeepers, Uncle Rodney, uh, couldn't you just mail it, G. Willikers? What's, what's the matter, Junior? Is your Buster Brown collar choking you? Shut up. I, no, not you, Uncle Rodney. That was my grandma talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Uncle Rodney, uh, the doctor says I got a bad case of mumps. And I hate like the jeepers to have you catch it. Uh, couldn't you just mail a prize? Oh, you want to see what I look like? Well, I hope I won't disappoint you, Uncle. You, you, you know how mumps age you, gentlemen. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. Oh, brother, what a spot. Miss Duffy, quick. Give me a drink. How about a shot of hot milk? <laughs> Drop dead, will you? Fats, look, play a little music to calm me down, will you? Jeepers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chances are to look like a 13-year-old. About the same chance the little bankhead has to look like Margaret O'Brien. <laughs> Good evening, folks. I'm Uncle Rodney. I'm looking for young Master Archie. I happen to be that master. You? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, what I mean is I'm the Mr. Master, the lad's dad. <laughs> you mean you're the boy's father? Yes, by a former marriage to his mother. <laughs> well, sir, my hearty congratulations. You have an extremely bright son. Naturally. <clears throat> well, Uncle Rodney, uh, I don't like to detain you, so if you'll just fork over the boat ticket, I'll be very happy to bid you good night. Oh, but I couldn't give you the ticket. You mean you ain't got one? Oh, yes, but I was presented to the child in person. That's one of the rules of the contest. Oh, yeah, huh? Well, you see, he's out with the boys tonight, uh, shooting a little hopscotch. <laughs> Unfortunately, he ain't at home. You mean he lives here in this horrible saloon? Well, no, he don't exactly live here. He just drops in once in a while for a nightcap. <laughs> 
No, he he likes his Ovaltine with an olive in it. But as I say, uh, just leave the boat ticket with me. And, uh... oh, I'm sorry, sir, but under the circumstances, you'll have to give the little fellow my regrets and tell him better luck next time. Well, wait a minute. Don't leave. You can't do this. I already got me seasick pills. What? <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, are you going to let the kiddies program hour slip this sweet little child of Mickey? Ain't, uh, ain't there enough people hating radio as it is? <laughs> I'm sorry. Good night. Uh, say, I, I was... Well, just... Junior, wherever have you been? Well, I was just walking the... <laughs> Junior! <laughs> this is your son? I'm shocked. You're shocked. How do you think I feel? <laughs> But look at him. Look at the size of him. Well, well, he told you, you know, he's he's swelled up. He's got the mumps. <laughs> Say, wait a minute. What's going on here, Arch? Arch? Yeah, yeah, that's what he calls me on account of we're just like brothers, you know. Yeah. Uh, I was just telling the man, Junior, uh, how proud Daddy is that you, Junior, have just won the contest to Honolulu, Junior. Arch, what's all this junior stuff? Junior, well, it's a, it's a term that they use in families, son. Uh, I was just telling the man here that you are my junior. Well, well, so you're Master Archie. How old are you, young man? Me? Thirty-one. Uh, Uncle Rodney, he means thirteen. As you can see, he's a little backwards. <laughs> He's uh, slightly troubled with uh, amnesia. Amnesia? Yes, uh, loss of mind. <laughs> Look, Junior, tell Uncle Rodney to quit horsing around and quick give you the ticket, huh? Give me a ticket? What is this guy, a cop? <laughs> I don't know whether this is a 13-year-old kid acting as an idiot or an idiot acting as a 13-year-old kid. <laughs> Well, to a guy that runs a children's program, I should think that would be obvious. <laughs> now, stop the stalling and give the kid the ticket. Very well. As I say, there are certain rules to this contest that must be observed. Now, number one, young man, do you eat itsy bitsy breakfast cereal? Oh, boy, do I? Six plates at a time. I eat them every morning before breakfast. <laughs> Well, why before breakfast? Well, I'm hungrier then. <laughs> well, that takes care of question number one. Now, question number two. Will you quote the winning slogan you submitted? Uh, yes, Junior. Uh, tell the man why you like Honolulu. Remember the thing? The Honolulu. Oh, oh yeah, that was a... Uh, oh, let's see now. Quote, the... When I land a Lulu, I love her on an island. I mean, the, the, uh, when I love an island, I land it on a Lulu. Boy, it's a good thing I memorized it, huh? Well, Uncle Rodney, uh, when does uh, Junior start for Honolulu? In 1956. That's five years from now. That's right. By that time, he can buy his own ticket out of his old age pension. Good night, gentlemen. <laughs> Duffy's Tavern, transcribed on NBC, is produced by Edward F. Gardner and written by Larry Ryan.